everyone for having me here. Um, I'm Gabrielle. I'm a PhD student at the group of Jordan Horowitz at the University of Michigan. And today I want to talk about how non-equilibrium response is, is fundamentally limited by topology and thermodynamics. And in order to motivate our results, um, I will use a receptor binding model where we have a receptor here in green. In this case, we assume it has two binding sites um, and ligands here in yellow can bind and unbind. So we can have one at the left, one binding at the right or two of the sites being bound. And the binding rates are proportional to the concentration of ligands in the environment. So if we're interested in characterizing the system, uh, we can look, for example, at binding curves uh, which uh, gives us what's the average concentration of ligands um, of, a bound, uh, of bound ligands in the receptor as a function of the concentration of ligands in the environment. So what we see is a switch like behavior where for low concentrations in average there is no ligands um, in the receptor and for high concentrations all the uh, all the binding sites are occupied. So uh, if we look at the steepness of the curves, which is given by the response of the average of the ligand occupation number uh, in respect to changes, logarithm changes in concentration, uh, we can study how sensitive the system is to changes in concentration. And an interesting question that we can ask ourselves is, um, is a system that's out of equilibrium more sensitive uh, the one that's, the one that's in equilibrium? Um, so if we are interested in studying a non-equilibrium system, we always start by asking ourselves what happens in equilibrium, right? And then now we are talking to, uh, about a general observable F, and uh, we have that in equilibrium, the fluctuation dissipation theorem tells us that this sensitivity is equal to the covariance of F with N, which is uh, the ligand occupation number. And if we further assume that the observable F is bounded between zero and one, which is natural if we're thinking, for example, as the average occupation number normalized by the number of binding sites, this covariance can be bounded by the average of the observable one minus its average. And uh, we have this uh, proportionality constant in the front, which is equal to two for this case, which is exactly the number of binding sites in the system. Uh, so we also can ask ourselves which, um, which curve saturates this inequality at all values of concentration. And this is what is called a hill curve where which has this functional form over here where age is known as the hill coefficient, which in equilibrium, it's always equal to the number of binding sites. So now we can ask ourselves what happens out of equilibrium and in order to um, have non-equilibrium driving in our receptor binding model, we couple it to ATP hydrolysis, right? So now we have a chemical potential difference that is uh, driving the system out of equilibrium. So now if we randomly sample rates uh, for the system and we plot the sensitivity divided by this um, F1 minus F and we look at this ratio as a function of the uh, non-equilibrium driving, we do see that uh, it's not bounded by two anymore, which is what you would expect in equilibrium. And there is, uh, and there seems to be a bound over here that even depends on the non-equilibrium driving. So a question that we want, we are interested in, we will be able to answer at the end of the talk is, um, what is this term over here that's bounding uh, this sensitivity when we are out of equilibrium. So of course, uh, we need to describe what we're talking about and the overall problem that we're interested in looking at, what is the, we're looking at steady state averages of observables that we call Q, and there is an external parameter lambda, which can be externally uh, perturbed. So what we're interested in looking is to the response, uh, to the response of changes uh, of this parameter lambda. And of course, there are many ways to describe non-equilibrium uh, systems and non-equilibrium dynamics. And what we, uh, and what we, uh, we are talking about is uh, Markov jump processes, which, which have this very good way to visualize them using, graph, uh, using graphs, where each node represents a state of the system and the edges represent the uh, possible transitions between states. And we always assume by thermodynamic consistency that there is always the forward and the backward rates. Uh, and 
all of them are weighted by a transition rate. A very important characteristic of uh, such systems are cycles, which are trajectories that connect a state with itself without self-intersection. And for each cycle, we can associate a cycle force, which is the log ratio of forward and backward weights in the cycle. Um, and the uh, uh, the cycle forces tells us how far away from equilibrium our system is. So, and in the way that we think uh, of, re of response and perturbation in the setup is to have the transition rates being dependent on the external parameter. So um, our approach to be able to detangle and understand all the possible perturbations uh, that the system can possibly have is to decompose the perturbations in different categories. One specific category is called an equilibrium-like, um, which accounts for changing uniformly all of the outgoing rates from a specific state, in this case n. So if I want to give, to give you a little bit of intuition, we can assume that if the system comes equipped in an energy lens, Escape, uh, this type of perturbation accounts for changing the energy of the state. And as the name says, says this is an equilibrium-like perturbation, which uh, sets, satisfies the fluctuation dissipation theorem. But now uh, we also have what we call a symmetric perturbation, which accounts for changing the forward and the backward rates between two states. So perturbing this edge M and M here, which accounts for changing the energy barrier between states M and M. This perturbation is, is zero in equilibrium, but we might ask ourselves, um, what is how is bounded when it's out in equilibrium? And this is exactly what our main result tells us, uh, which is a fluctuation response inequality that's telling us that the response of observable to changes uh, in the energy barrier depends on it's depends on two different terms. One is a topological term, another one is a thermodynamic. It's related to thermodynamic driving. So. For the thermodynamic driving part, uh, what counts is the maximum cycle force, which is uh, the maximum cycle force over all cycles that contain the perturbed edge, in this case, M and M. And over here for the topology term, what we are interested in is structure called the topological consistent splitting, uh, which is the splitting between the states of the system in two different subsets, one that contains states M, and, and the other that contains states n. And the splittings, they need to be consistent with the topology of the system. So what we have over here is the maximum over all this possible splittings of the covariance of the observable with a D indicator function over all states that are part of the subset that contains states m. And of course, we can, uh, we can numerically verify this result. So if we plot uh, the response uh, now normalized by this uh, topological term over here uh, for randomly sampled rates and look at it as a function of the maximum cycle force of the system, we do see that indeed it's bounded by uh, the tangent of the maximum cycle force over four. Uh, so now we are actually ready uh, to answer the question that we had in the very beginning and go back to the uh, our non equilibrium receptor binding model. So now if we use our approach and we look at the sensitivity, we see that the res this response can be decomposed in five different response, while three of them are equilibrium like. So they are equilibrium like in, no, in states one, uh, two and four, and the other two are symmetric like. So they correspond to perturbing energy barriers between states one and two and between states one and four. So now using the bounds uh, that we found, we have the sensitivities bounded by the equilibrium-like term, uh, which is the covariance between F and the ligand occupation number, plus now the maximum uh, uh, of, of between topological splittings between states two and four of the covariance of the observable F over indicator functions uh, over subsets that contain state two times the hyper hyperbolic tang uh, of the non equilibrium driving over four. We can also ask ourselves what happens if when we don't have access, uh, we only have access, for example, to the average of the observable. And when we do that, we have access to a we obtain a coarser version of the bound, which is uh, uh, where we have, again, this functional form average of F1 minus average of F. And here the proportionality term is now two, which is exactly what we would expect in equilibrium plus the non-equilibrium driving. Uh, so 
we answered the question that we had at the very beginning of the talk, which is uh, this term over here. It's it, it's exactly an equilibrium-like term plus uh, a, a non-equilibrium term. Uh, and we can also ask the same question we asked before. It's which curve um, saturates this inequality for every value of concentration? And uh, when we do that, we see that this curve it's, it has exactly uh, a hue curve-like functional form, but now the hue coefficient um, is equal to the equilibrium term plus this non-equilibrium enhanced term. So uh, here in red, we have this um, optimal non-equilibrium hue curve. And now here in purple, we do see uh, this curve over here for an equilibrium system and in dashed for um, a system Okay, we lost your sound. Yeah, I, I was just trying to ask you if you still hear it or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we lost your last uh, 30 seconds. Sorry, we, we lost your voice. We, we don't hear you. Uh, maybe the headphone uh, charge, so it's the battery is empty or something. I don't know. Yeah, you plug. If you take out the headphones, maybe it's, it's better. Can no? you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was almost finishing, and what I was going to say is that the steepness of the curve, uh, of the purple curve and the dash curve are um, are always um, upper bounded by this um, Hewlett curve, Hewlett -like curve out of equilibrium. Um, so if uh, thank you for listening to the talk, and I would like you to take as take-home messages that um, the topology and thermodynamics constrain non-equilibrium response, and if we apply those results um, to a receptor binding model, we do have that the Hue coefficient, uh, it's equal to a the equilibrium Hue coefficient plus a non-equilibrium driving. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, there's a question by David Sivak. Maybe you want to unmute, David? Sure, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great, uh, really nice talk. I was just curious, this, this one over four factor appears everywhere in the Tanch argument. Do you have any intuition for sort of where is that coming from? Um, <laughs> um, the... I, well, I guess the intuition that comes, you need to go through all of the math and how, where everything comes from. Um, I'm not sure if I have a good intuition, but it comes naturally if you're using the matrix three theorem and um, and solving this terms over here. Um, and then, so basically this term that always depends on the maximum cycle force over four, it's a uh, ratio between rates of cycles, uh, unnormalized rates of cycles. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I actually really answered the question, uh, but I'm not sure if there is a good intuition of why the over four. Okay, there's a comment by Tom. Maybe you can comment briefly or KT. Yeah, it just it just seems to come up quite a lot, like factors of roughly well factors of four exactly. I've seen in a number of papers. I'm not sure if I've seen anything in a a TUR paper which has a four rather than a two, but I've seen a four in Peter Ryan Van Walder's paper on and Chris Govan's paper on energy resource costs of sensing, which is obviously a closely related system, and I've seen it in a thermodynamic paper on thermodynamic error of time uh yeah so i don't know i don't know if there's anything deep there but it's this isn't un unique that a four has kind of fallen out of the analysis interesting interesting uh, presumably it's not specific to the network topology here no no it's not yeah Nothing that I showed is um, um, is specific to this. I use this example, but nothing is specific to this network topology at all. 
It is time for a quick question by Jonathan. His raised hand, please. Hi, uh, thank you, Gabrielle, for the great talk. I was wondering if there would be any, uh, if, if you thought there'd be any merit in using this as sort of an inverse problem if you had some sort of like hill-like graph 